Hello everybody, welcome back to another English lesson. Um, last time, in the last couple of, um, of lessons that we put together, we were looking at the cover of our magazine. Hopefully you've got some ideas about what goes into a cover, how to create a cover of a magazine, and how to make it look like how to make it look interesting so that people would want to read it. Today we're going to start our topic looking at specific magazine articles. Well, I don't want that to happen. Specific magazine articles. So to start off with, I'm going to drop that part down because we don't need it just yet. I'm going to ask everyone to write these four questions in our books. Well, four lines of questions. I think some of them are double up a little bit. The reason why we're writing this is when we finish our magazine, sorry, if you can see me looking to the side because I've got my other screen there and I'm just trying to make sure that the recording's all good and everything's coming out well. The reason why we're gonna um, we're answering these four questions at the end of our lesson is because if we have a proper answer for some of our art, um, articles that we've made, it means that we've started our journey into learning about these. Now, we don't need to have a perfect answer, but it's just a bit of a start to what takes place in writing an article. What take, what, it's a start to what we're looking at with these articles. The first question says, what type of language will we use? Next up, we've got, what is the purpose or why are we writing this? Who are we writing for or who is our audience? And last, we've got, why do we need to edit? So I'm going to ask you, so in your English books, in your, I'm um, sorry, notepads, paper, whatever, however you're doing your work, we're going to have the heading magazine articles and then these four underneath. If you want to even leave a space between each one, I've got no problem. But if you've already started and you haven't left the space, no stress. All right, so I'm going to ask you to pause the video, get this done, and we'll be back. I think I've learned how to pause a recording, which I'm very... Mate, why is this there? I think I've learned how to pause my recordings, but I think I'm going to have to go in and edit something at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So I need to write that down so that I remember to cut something out. All right, in any case, we're back. Now, we're going to have a look at some magazine articles. So here's where I'm going to sh um, show you guys what how I would try and search for something. If we're looking for magazine articles, what type of things would we type into Google? The easiest thing to type in would be magazine article. And then we can see what comes up. So here we've got the New York Times, which is a bit more of a newspaper. We've got Time Magazine. KK.org, the best magazine articles ever. Roughly 100 fantastic magazine articles. So we've got a couple of things. We're going to have a quick glance at these and see what we have. Los Angeles goes to war with itself over the homeless. Um, okay, this doesn't look altogether too great. Time magazine, voting rights. I don't think anyone really cares about any of that stuff. Can we find an article that's a bit more fun? Then I didn't let motherhood slow her down. Sue Bird stares down Olympic glory. Let's have a, oh, okay, no. Again, something that's a bit more fun. Cool Tools, the best magazine articles ever. Let's have a look at, no. I'm going to even tear this down a little bit more. Let's have a look at some sport magazine articles. So the New York Magazine has some sport stuff. Indie Sport, Sports Time, let's have a look. Not a lot of these articles look altogether too interesting. Hopefully, if you guys at home are doing a little bit of research on your own magazine articles, 
you're having a bit more luck than I am. If we can access this one, we'll look at it. It looks very boring, but... So this one's our backup. <laughs> See, we've got one on rock climbing. Here's a free Olympic sports climbing lesson. I'm not going to lie, that does look very interesting. Um... The Olympic refugee team. All right. So. Oh, this is going to be a video. I don't know if I'm allowed to show another company's video, so we won't do that just yet. But this being an online magazine means that they can, um, they can have a couple, they can have some videos in there as opposed to just regular pictures. Um, with what we're working on, we might stick with pictures for the time being instead of full videos. Well, let's have a look at the article. So what we will do, I'm going to close that. We're going to go through, we're going to read through some of this. Maybe not all of it, but we're going to read through it. And we're going to try and answer our questions. Uh, our questions of what type of language did we use? What is the purpose and why are we writing, writing this? Or why did they write this one? Who are we writing this for? Or who is our audience? And why do we need, to, why did they edit? So, let's have a look through this. I'm going to try and zoom in so that it's a bit clearer for you guys. That seems like it's good. One more zoom in. Okay, it's a bit better. You know what? Pause with me for just one second. You don't have to pause the video. I am, if I add a scene... And I call it that. Sorry, guys. Uh, not that one. Bear with me. The screen is, is blank. I know. I apologize. Display capture. Add existing. Display capture. I think it's that one. Oh, thank God. I'm going to extend it just a little bit to try and... Perfect. Sorry about that, guys. You were in on a little bit of a uh, an editing lesson. Not that you saw what I was doing. It's just, yeah. All right. So the heading of this is, here's a free Olympic sports climbing lesson. Why do you think they've called it that? They haven't said Olympic sports climbing lesson. They've made sure to write, here's a free why do you think they've written it in this way? To me, it seems like they've done this to say that here's a free, so we're handing some, we're giving you something where they're not just trying to get us to clickbait. They're trying to show us, okay, it's not clickbait. Here's a full free video, uh, an article. And they've given us the topic. It's an Olympic sport climbing lesson. Now, it's not just a regular um sports climbing lesson, but we can tell that based on the words that they've used, it's even better than just a regular climbing lesson. This is an Olympic sports climbing lesson. So bear with me, I'm just giving my glasses a quick clean because they were very, there was a lot of stuff on them. They weren't the cleanest when I put them on. I'm so sorry, everybody. That's much better. Better for me, you guys didn't notice any difference. <laughs> All right. And here we've got the author by Sean Gregory from Salt Lake City. If you want to become an Olympic sport climber, you'd better be able to tie a mean knot. That's one lesson I learned. So we'll, let's just focus on this part. It's our opening sentence. Have they, did they catch your attention? If you want to become an Olympic sports climber, you'd better be able to tie a mean knot. Did they catch your attention? For me, they did catch my attention because they're talking about if you want to become not just a regular climber, but an Olympic sports climber. And it was even the phrase, a mean knot, which some of us might be used to that slang, which means like a really, really good knot. You'd better be able to tie a really, really good knot. So here they've shown us that the type of language that they've used 
no, that one. The type of language that they've used, well, here's where, is it formal or informal? In this article, I think they've used more informal language. They're not telling us to become a masterclass Olympic climber, one must partake in such activities as practicing their knot tying skills. They haven't tried to use super formal language, but they've asked us if we can tie a mean knot. That's one lesson I learned while spending a day at Team USA climber, Kyra Condi. I learned while spending a day. So here's why we look at our editing as well. I think there's a word missing. That's one lesson, that's one lesson I learned while spending the day with the Team USA climber, Kyra Condi, whom Time, the magazine, named one of its most recent list, named two its most recent list of next generation leaders for her work in advocating for diversity and inclusion in sport. Condi, who was based in Salt Lake City, also took time to participate in a video demonstration seen above of sport climbing which will make its Olympic debut in Tokyo. I gave it a try. Condi was kind enough to tie a complicated knot for me. Olympic climbing won't take place on a mountain. The competitors will scale climbing walls, not unlike those found in indoor rock climbing gyms that have grown more popular in recent years. The Olympic event combines three disciplines, speed climbing, bouldering and lead climbing. So here they've used this as a bit of an introduction to tell us what's happening. Here is told us about who has taught him all about it. And this is introducing us to the, the three different types of rock climbing. In speed climbing, athletes race up a 15 meter wall. It will be the quickest sprint at the games. The men's world record is 5.208 seconds, set in May by Vedric Leonardo, Leonardo of Indonesia. And the women's world record, set by Russia's Yulia Kaplina, is 6.964 seconds. At the 2024 Paris Olympics, speed climbing is set to become its own event. Speed climbing is the, is the most straightforward, says Condi. It's always the same. You can climb on the same wall in Moscow as you can in Chicago. The holds are regulated. They're always the same distance apart. They're always in the exact same orientation. That one is about how fast you go. It's purely a race. Here we've got a, a pretty good description about what speed climbing is. Bouldering. Bouldering is more of a puzzle. Athletes get four minutes to climb as many routes as possible on a shorter wall. If you fall, you get to try again. Condi says bouldering is her favorite discipline. There's no rope, there's no harness. Condi says, the best way to fall is to hit feet first and then roll backwards. Having tried bouldering for the first time with Condi, I can say from experience, learning to fall correctly takes practice and lead climbing. Finally, there's lead climbing. Leads climbing, it's longer, and you have a harness and a rope. It's kind of more classic climbing when you picture rock climbing. And you only get one try in lead climbing, which for me makes it the most stressful. And it's about how far you go purely. So if I get to hold number 35, and somebody else gets to hold number 37, they'll beat me in that. How is Olympic sport scored? In climbing, the Olympic scoring system is fairly straightforward. The lower your score, the better. Each discipline is scored within itself, says Condi. And then you get a rank. So say I win bouldering, win lead, and get 10th in speed, then those are my three ranks. And they multiply with three ranks together. So I'd have, so I'd have a one-time a one time, sorry, I'd have a one time, a one times 10, and I would have 10 points. 
I, I didn't understand that part. So I'm sorry, guys. So here's where it gets a bit, you know, the article loses a bit of interest, but the first part seemed really interesting. So as we look through this, let's answer these questions based on this specific article. So if you've written these out, we might write them out again. And we're going to call this rock climbing article. So what type of language did we use in the article? The author used informal language. They weren't talking in a really formal, proper way. It's not like they were talking to the queen. They were trying to talk in a way that a friend might talk to another friend. What is the purpose of this article? Why do you think they wrote the article? I think this article was written to tell people about rock climbing in the Olympics. And also to introduce, I forgot the lady's name, what was her name? Kyra Condi. To the, well, just to everybody, really. So who was this written for? Who was, who was their audience? Well, it's in a Time Sport magazine. So I think it's people that like sport. Or people that like the Olympics. Or people that like rock climbing. Now, why do we need to edit our work after looking at this? To fix some mistakes that we might see. It would have been great if the author caught all of the mistakes that they made, but I think they made a couple that they missed out on. So in any case, I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video to get this or something similar to this, your own answers to these questions into your workbooks. So pause the video and I'll see you guys in a sec. So we're going to take a couple of minutes to work on our own articles. So here's what I want you to do. So I want you to choose a topic that you're an expert or that you feel interested in, something that you like. You're going to choose an interesting way to come at this article. You're going to do some research. You might even create an outline first. So let's make a start. I might choose something that I really like. Okay. So let's say I'm writing an article on my twin brother, The Rock. Now, I need to choose an interesting angle. I'm not just going to write a full thing just about the whole, like The Rock, because we could find something like that on Wikipedia. I might write something. So my article, if I'm trying to come at it in an interesting way, was who was The Rock when he was younger? Okay, so I've chosen my topic. I've chosen an interesting angle. Now, for research, because he's my twin brother and we look exactly the same, <laughs> I'm going to, well, I've already done a little bit of research. Um, when it was on Foxtel, I watched the, uh, the Young Rock TV show. So I'm going to create my outline, outline based on some of the things I saw in the show. So here's what I'm going to create my outline. What do I want to look at when, I don't even know what how that came up, but so I'm so sorry. Uh, here's what I'm going to look at when I'm writing this article. So first, who were The Rock's parents? What was he like when he was in school? 
Who did he grow up to be? So this is my outline. These are the three big points that I want to hit in my article. So now I'm going to write my article out. So first, remember, we're writing in pure paragraphs. So we should have four sentences for each paragraph. So first, The Rock is an amazing actor. Full stop. Before he was an actor, he was a professional wrestler. Full stop. His finishing moves were the rock bottom and the people's elbow. Full stop. How many sentences have I got so far? I've got one full stop, two full stops, three full stops. So I know I need at least one more sentence here. Today we will be looking at who the rock who the rock was before he was the rock. Boom, there I've got four sentences. So now I'm going to look at who were the rock's parents. The rock's parents were two amazing people. His mother was from Hawaii, but not many people knew who she was, full stop. His father was, does anyone, anyone know who The Rock's father was? I've forgotten his wrestling name. Rocky Soul Man Johnson, that's right. His father was Rocky Soul Man Johnson. His father had a big professional wrestling career, but he was not a rich person, full stop. The Rock wanted to be like his father, and he wanted to earn enough money to take care of his parents, full stop. So here I've got who are the Rock's parents. I had a brief sentence about his, his mother, but his mum didn't have his, uh, the same kind of story that his, that his father did, Rocky Soul Man Johnson. And we spoke about what the Rock wanted to do, so to take care of his parents. And our sentences here, one, two, three, four, five. Really, I could probably talk a lot more about both of his parents, but I don't, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Now, if we come back to these questions and we answer these about what I've written so far, what type of language did we use here? We used informal. I, did, well, I wasn't trying to speak too formally. Why are we writing this? To learn about my twin brother, The Rock. Who are we writing this for? People who like or want to know about The Rock. And why do we need to edit? In case we made any mistakes. So here I've got Soul Man that's underlined, but I know that that, that was his wrestling name. So we know that we can leave that. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to choose your own, an article that you want to write about. So I'm just going to add this at the bottom here. Choose a topic that you want to write an 
article about. Research and plan out your article. And then make your first draft of the article. Here's where by the end of this week, I would like you guys to have a couple of articles. So after we've made our first draft, edit and rewrite your article to make it sound better. Here's where by the end of this week, I would like you guys to have three, maybe four articles written so that when we do come back to school, we can have a look at all of them and come back to them. So each day, devote a little bit of your time to working on your articles. Sound good? Boom. In any case, thank you all for watching. If there's any part of the episode of this class that you didn't understand or you need a little bit more help with, um, write a question on the Google Classroom. Come back, chase us up. Um, myself or Miss McCallum, any of the other teachers are here to help you. Anything that we can do, we're always around. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.